All right, now that we have gone through the process of making our first MLR, evaluating it, let's tweak some of the variables we're using so you can see some of the cool things that Azure does for us. First of all, you hopefully noticed in the prior video that uh, Azure automatically standardizes variables for us and makes them comparable, unlike we uh, didn't do, weren't able to, well, we would have had to do that by hand in Excel or manually, not by hand. However, it does something else cool for us. Come here to the Select Columns and Data Set and Let's uh, include variables that we didn't have before. Actually, one at a time, let's first do this. Let's get rid of education numeric and add in education. So just like we did in Excel, when you learn how to create dummy codes and handle categorical variables, I want you to see what Azure does for us. So all we have to do now is check the box, come down to the bottom, whoops, hit zero, click evaluate model, run selected. Nothing else was required. Azure is going to go through and automatically create dummy codes for all of the categories in education. So uh, it's important that you make sure that you, that you do remove, however, the education numeric field because it's highly correlated with education categorical field. But uh, get this running and I'll pause it and we'll continue. All right, let's take a look here at train model first. Right click, visualize. All right, education high school, education bachelors. What is this exactly? Well, the underscore 203 is, first it gives you the field name, the feature name, and then it has now divided or created one, two, three, four, five variables representing the five different values of education. So it gives you the feature name first, underscore the value, and then underscore just some ordering or some number that it found that value in. So uh, high school was that probably, I don't know, was it sorted alphabetically? That's probably what it was. Yeah, bachelor's is first and zero base, so zero, one for graduate, two for high school, so forth. But anyway, now we get a coefficient for each individual dummy code, just like we did in Excel. And we can see actually that education, when you break it out that way, each of those fields has a huge effect in whether or not someone's purchasing the bike. Marital status still comes after those, it didn't affect this one a whole lot, I'm surprised. Cars, homeowner. As we scroll down, we see that gender, age, and income still play very little role at all. But what's this one right here? Education unknown. Well, remember in Excel when we did this, we got an error when including all dummy codes for all possible values of a categorical variable. We had to choose one and leave it out in order for the model to run. Azure has a smart way of always creating an extra category uh, that it uses that one as the baseline. This one always comes back as a zero. So you'll always have a feature, pound sign, and then unknown, and that will represent a baseline score for that category. So now we have interpretable coefficients for all the rest of them. Um, anyway, so pretty cool. That's how Azure handles dummy codes, or handles uh, categorical variables. Let's take a look here at what that did to our R squared. So treating education as a category instead of a number actually improved it quite a bit. We went from 0.091 to 0.097, which was even better than we were getting before in Excel. So awesome. We've just learned something. Uh, treating education, even though there's a clear ordering to the levels of education, um, the order, it wasn't linear. When people got more education, it didn't always have a greater or always a lesser effect on whether or not they purchased a bike. It went up or down depending on what the level was. So it makes more sense to treat levels of education as separate independent categories. That's what we learned from, from making that switch right there. Okay, cool. Let's grab the rest of the uh, categorical variables. Um, let's not worry about all these binary ones that we already have a zero or one for. It doesn't make a difference at all. Let's not worry about those. We So let's just leave in the numeric versions. Commute distance, however, Let's get rid of that one and put in the regular version of commute distance. That'll give us a bunch of dummy codes because that one has like five or six values. Um, homeowners do yes, no, so we'll leave those. And then let's go ahead and grab region, occupation. Is there another one? No, I think that's it. So those are the two variables that there was no way to make um, a numeric version of those without making dummy codes. You can't say that one occupation is greater or lesser than another or one region's greater or less than another. Not like you could with education and commute distance, at least. Anyway, let's run that, or uh, check the box and run this one last time. All right, let's take a look here. 
Uh, actually, let's first do train model and see what we got here. Okay, by including region and occupation, we got even uh, larger coefficient weights. Region, occupation, and commute distance plays a big role. This is kind of interesting. Look, when you live within a mile, you're very likely to buy bikes. Two to five miles, you're still very likely to buy bikes. But 10 plus, you're very unlikely to buy bikes. Then as you get into like the one to two range, you're like, eh, all right, I'm more likely to buy a bike. Five to 10, this number is really close to zero. In other words, eh, I could go either way. Maybe I will, maybe I won't. And that makes complete sense. Um, so as commute distance increases, uh, it has a pretty negative effect, but the difference between each of them is not the same. Uh, so I think it's probably better to treat that as a categorical variable. Uh, but if I wanted to test it for sure, I would have had to keep region and occupation out of the model and just like I did before, look at the difference with or without commute distance as a categorical variable. Anyway, let's take a look at our evaluate model here. Okay, got even better. And that's normal. As you include more variables, if those variables do any good at all, it's going to increase the size of your R squared. Um, now, you might notice that there's something conspicuously absent here in the MLR we did in Azure that was in Excel. Let me go back and show you. What is missing from this view? P-values. In Excel, it gave us a p-value for whether or not each one of these coefficient weights was statistically significant. Why don't we have those here? That's because when we shift into machine learning and organization type predictions, we no longer care about p-value. The reason why is p-value is dependent on the sample size, meaning as I get more and more samples, p-values tend to get smaller and smaller. Not tend to, they will by definition. That's the formula for p-value. Uh, in fact, let me pull up an example and show you exactly what I mean by that. p-value Oops, let's do P value formula. I'm going to go to images. I bet I've got a picture of one somewhere. All right, here. And this P value formula, uh, this score, I'm not going to go through every little thing, um, but this N, I want to show that to you. This N is in the bottom of a, it's in a denominator of an equation. N is sample size. As sample size gets bigger, what happens to this score? the score gets smaller and smaller and smaller, right? Well, what if I'm Amazon and I do a million transactions every three hours, which was an estimate I got one time. Well, if I want to calculate just the last, let's say, year's worth of data, that's a bazillion records. In other words, it doesn't matter how tiny the actual coefficient effect size is. It could be this one right here for income. It's so close to zero, but with that many records, I'll get a p-value of 0 0.0000000001. In other words, the p-value will tell me, wow, income is a hugely important variable. It's really not, though. It's just that I have so many records that, that the p-value is able to reflect very small effect sizes. These coefficients are effect sizes. And now, when we deal with massive amounts of data, as we usually do in organizations, and when I say massive, I mean anything over a few thousand. Uh, for the sake of a p-value calculation, once you get over several thousand, p-value just starts to become meaningless. So we no longer care about p-value. We just are going to look at this, and uh, we'll talk in the next chapter how I choose which of these variables to keep and which ones to cut out. But for now, just know that Azure is great. It automatically does dummy codes for us, automatically standardizes for us, um, and in later chapters, we'll talk about how to, uh, in fact, two chapters from now, how to not only have categorical and numeric features, but how to switch out the dependent variable uh, and, set, and use a categorical dependent variable like this one instead of a numeric one. But for now, we'll call it good.